Well, good morning, Greenwich, and welcome to the Friday, February 2nd, Punxsutawney Phil, Groundhog's Day edition of the Basement Academy. As we wrap up our week together with our invitation to pray, I hope you're starting to build a little rhythm. It's, you know, for some folks, it's easy. Other folks, it's tricky to, you know, do it this way. You know, say the prayer points and offer it in your own words, but really hoping this becomes a meaningful expression of your faith and your intercession. And so I uh, invite you to continue with that. Uh, some of you may start to be receiving the generation to generation flyer in the mail, hopefully so. If not, still uh, the, the prayer guides, they are on the, the website. And so uh, welcome you downloading that and using that uh, daily for your prayers. Let me read our morning psalm. It's Psalm 122. It's a psalm of David. It says, I rejoiced when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing in your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built like a city that is closely compacted together. That is where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord according to the statute given to Israel. There the thrones for judgment stand, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my brothers and friends, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. Hmm. Psalm 122. Lord, hear our prayer for the physical city of Jerusalem and Israel and the West Bank and Gaza and all the conflict we pray for peace. And come, Lord Jesus, and help those who suffer and we pray for peace in our own homes, right? And so this is a great psalm, I think, that sits underneath our, our um, prayer focus uh, for the day. And so the Friday prayer focus is for families, youth, and children. And so the four prayer points, Lord, hear our prayer. For effective Sunday school, and preschool classes for growing our growing youth fellowship and the youth leaders for God's protection and favor on our marriages and our families and Lord hear our prayer for our children and for the parents to grow in Christ likeness Lord, hear our prayer as we lift these prayer points before you. And so, expanding, taking our own words, weaving these prayer points into other kinds of prayers, right? So if you have a child or a grandchild in Sunday school, pray for your Sunday school teacher, right? <laughs> Not just for the child. Yes, pray for the child to learn the lessons, but pray for the Sunday school teacher in their preparation, in their delivery, in their managing the classroom, all that is involved in uh, effectively communicating. And for our preschool, not all of our preschool families are part of Greenwich, but, but there are many who are. And so we're, we're glad for this community resource. So Lord, hear our prayer. Thank you for our Sunday school teachers, the men and women who devote the time, prepare during the week, and then are there to love and guide and teach the children. And we pray that those times, brief as they are on a Sunday morning, would scatter seeds and would sow seeds that, that bear fruit one day in the lives of these young lives. Pray for uh, Tracy Anderson, our preschool director and our preschool teachers, thank you for uh, the, the, the rich heritage we have with the Greenwich Preschool and for the families 
that participate there. May, may that be part of the just a foundational experience for these children as they're learning of Jesus, they're learning their letters, <laughs> they're learning how their colors, they're learning how to cooperate. And so pray, Lord, for your grace and favor and protection on our preschool. And we delight to pray for our youth fellowship, our youth ministry, our student ministry. Thank you for Lauren McMillan. Thank you for the team she leads, uh, the leaders, volunteers, and others, Lord. And for the moms and dads uh, who partner and help participate around the edges, but mostly for the students, uh, the young people themselves. May they... May they fall in love with the Savior. Would they look back at these years? Someday, would they look back and say, that's when I met the Lord. That's when I grew in the Lord. That's when it got clear to me. So Lord, we ask that this, our youth ministry would expand, not, not so much in numbers, yes, in numbers, but more in, in, in depth and in fellowship, in authenticity, in the reality, the spiritual reality the inheritance, that spiritual inheritance that we are seeking to pass along, that new wine of, of, of Christ's love and presence. We pray that our, our young people would, would know him now and in days to come. And Lord, for our marriages, some brand new marriages in the last few months as I've officiated weddings, pray for these young couples as they begin their journey together as husband and wife. We pray for those who've been at it for a long time and you have been so faithful. For those who might be struggling right now um, with communication or other issue in the marriage, Lord, we pray for peace, a recovery of, of first love for one another and for you. And so protect our marriages, protect our families, there is so much going on in the world, O oh Lord, and so we ask for your grace, your kindness, your, your angels, uh, your Holy Spirit, particularly for those uh, students who are in high school and college, and there's so many messages coming that we don't think reflect the truth of your word. And so, Lord, we, we ask that you would close the ears of our young people to, to lies and deceptions that the world and the temptations and siren voice of the world, that our families uh, would be strong and, and experience that legacy from generation to generation. And finally, Lord, we simply pray that we might grow more and more into the character and likeness of Jesus Christ. This is your purpose. You have revealed this in your word, that he would be the firstborn among many, that we would be conformed to his image and by your grace, we believe that we are, so very slowly, but what we are, being transformed into his likeness from one degree of glory to, to the next. And so may the fruit of the Spirit be born in the lives of moms and dads that they may lead and model uh, such a life for their children. We pray for bedtime prayers and, and morning prayers and uh, mealtime prayers. Uh, that the moms and dads would know how to talk about Jesus as they rise, as they sit, as they go out, as they come home. And so, Lord, it's a joy and honor to pray uh, for this part of the ministry of Greenwich. Hear us as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm. Love praying for the families. Um, just before we wrap up uh, the campaign brochure, when you get it, you will see in those center pages, it describes the goals of the campaign. We want to eliminate the mortgage. We want to equip the campus. We talked about the mission focus yesterday. We want to talk about equipping the campus. And we want to, the early project we want to do when the funds allow, and we're hopeful that that would even be this summer, would be to renovate our basement for our growing student ministry. It is growing. We're excited about that. Uh, Lauren's doing a fantastic job, Lauren and team. Some of you don't even know the space I'm talking about. So, you know, the main sanctuary where we gather our new building, right? That still has the mortgage that we're trying to pay off. If you look out into the, you know, we know the chapel, right? And then you've got those two buildings that it's really one building, but they're connected. And so the 
the building closest to the playground, closest to the new sanctuary, we call the old Sunday school building. And that was built in 1949, I believe it was. Really got going in the 50s. And the basement of that building was the church's fellowship hall. So because the, the current fellowship hall that we use now didn't exist. That didn't come online till the late 60s, uh, early 70s is when that was going. So as Greenwich meeting in that chapel built a Sunday school building because otherwise Sunday school used to be in the, in the chapel itself, little circles up in the balcony and other parts. It was just, a, as I've heard it described, a, a beautiful thing. <clears throat> but the growing church needed space, and so the men of the church built the building. And in the basement was the fellowship hall, and there were poles, because they're supporting, right, the, the, the building and the, the floors. But it was open, and there was a kitchen there. And that's where the church gathered for meals and receptions and the like. And so in your brochure, I, I don't think this is gonna, you're going to see this very well, but in the brochure, you've got a couple pictures in the middle here. And so you've got a picture here of that, some, some folks playing uh, instruments. There's a guitar and somebody may have a tambourine or something there. And they're in that space. Th this is the exact same space. And those poles are the exact same poles, but now decades later... <clears throat> And so when the church built, when Greenwich built that new fellowship hall, the social hall, as, as some refer to it, uh, in the, the late 60s, well, now the downstairs basement fellowship hall was available for something else. And so some women of the church and community started a kindergarten, which became our preschool. So we're praying for the preschool today. It began down in that space. And so instead of a wide open space, some walls were erected and some rooms were built. And so <clears throat> there was a nursery uh, and a preschool that met down there. And that's the way it was when I came here in 2001. And so the weekday preschool was down there and uh, the little ones, the nursery was downstairs. And as Greenwich began to grow, it was crazy. We're trying to pick up your children, the line, going up into the hallway, down the stairs uh, to, to get the children. Of course, it, we're providing a safe and secure environment. Well, once we built our new building in 2015, the preschool and the nursery all moved over to the new building, as you know. If you've never toured that part of the, the building, please do. It's beautiful. And we built it to, to be able to breathe because it was really confined and constrained. <clears throat> Well, that's where our youth group now meets, but they've got those walls up and some smaller rooms where we had little rocking chairs for children. And the idea is we want to renovate that space back more towards an open space. There, there might be a wall in a room still, but, but we want to open that space back up for our youth ministry to, to grow and expand and, and have a more adequate uh, space. So that's part of what the campaign's going to be about is to raise some money. We think it might be in the neighborhood of a hundred ish thousand uh, dollars to do uh, the work down there. And, you know, it'd be, there's wiring and lighting and there's maybe some sound system and some other things and moving walls and uh, reinstalling a bathroom. <clears throat> we had little, little kid bathrooms. And uh, so anyway, um, someday you might just want to walk on over and, and see that space down there. But that's what we're hoping uh, to do with uh, some of the funds from this campaign. So, well, let me close here, close out our week. Uh, thank you for um, your attention. Um, might do another week of praying. I, I think might do that because this coming Sunday night, February 4th, uh, in just a couple days, um, there will be a team from the Presbytery that meets with our elders as the first of many uh, conversations. And I think what I'll do on Monday is probably unpack a little bit of what we heard and, and we'll really lean into some, continue to lean into these prayers uh, and, and do that. But what I also want to challenge you with is say your Saturday and Sunday prayers out of the prayer guide. Don't neglect Saturday and Sunday, okay? I'm not going to be recording Saturday and Sunday. But Saturday, we pray for the stewardship of the congregation, for generous hearts and open hands, for increased awareness and use of our spiritual gifts. It's just not the, the 
financial resources that we want to be generous with. God has granted us spiritual gifts. Wise and diligent administration of church funds and the faithful care of the buildings and grounds. Lord, hear our prayer for faithful stewardship. And then as we prepare for Sunday morning, the worship life of the congregation. May we grow a deeper love for Jesus Christ in each of our morning worship services. We pray for the worship leaders, for the musicians, for the choirs, for all who will be leading worship. And Lord, may there be a warm welcome for all who seek fellowship. And may there be ears to hear and hearts to embrace God's word as it is proclaimed. And so let's, let's close our time with prayer. Lord, be pleased to take this week's offering of prayer and this day's offering of prayer and make of these prayers what you will. Accomplish your good purposes in and through us. When the answer is no, we trust that you will grant us the patience, but we pray that there will be an unleashing of divine yes in so many ways for what we have prayed this week and especially this day. And so God, grant us your grace and guidance as we go into a very important uh, Sunday in the life of Greenwich. But most importantly, it's a Sunday where we gather to worship you. And so hear our prayers as we make them in the name of our blessed Savior Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May God bless you as you walk into this weekend. May he keep your heart praying this day and forevermore and enjoying the presence of God through those prayers. May he bless you now and forever. Amen.